firefighters, and cops. It's a rivalry as old as time. Both claim to have it harder than the other. Both claim to be the true heroes of the city, while the others are the slackers, and both of them frequently square off in baking contests and basketball games. But the true question remains, which one is better at Survivor? Cops and firefighters have had a massive impact on the show's history. Tom Westman, Jeremy Collins, Tony Velachos, Sarah Lucina, the list goes on. So in this video, I want to settle the debate, which profession is better at Survivor? And just like a 911 dispatcher, let's not waste any more time. Let's get right into it. So before I get started, I just wanted to break down who I'm referring to when I say firefighters and cops, as even though it's pretty straightforward, there were a few nuances I want to get into, at least on the police officer side. The firefighter side was pretty straightforward, where it was pretty much anyone that had either a firefighter or a fire captain in their name, to where there are 14 different firefighters, three of which are returning players. However, the police officer side was a bit more interesting as there was a bit more diversity in how they referred themselves as, whether as officers, sheriffs, sergeants, and whatever, to where there were only 11 players that fit that description, including two returning players. However, to round things out, I did decide to include a couple extra players that don't fit the traditional mold of police officer, but still are technically law enforcement. So the three players I included are Deb Eaton from the Australian Outback, who is a corrections officer, which is basically just a cop in jail, pretty much. I also included Papa Bear Caruso from South Pacific, who is a retired New York Police Department detective. So not quite a cop, but he is working with the cops, so close enough there. And I also included Kelly Remington from Worlds Apart, who is a state trooper, which is basically a cop, but only works on the highways. So through that, I was able to round it out to 14 cops across 18 different seasons, which worked out to be the exact same number as the firefighter side. So with that, I feel like these are two pretty equal teams in terms of the number of players, as well as the number of seasons played. So I feel like that makes this list pretty comparable. But with all that out of the way, let's get right into the competition. So first up, we have challenge performance. How consistently do firefighters and cops win both tribal and individual challenges? Now, while both jobs require some level of physical fitness, I think it's widely agreed that firefighters have a far more physically demanding job, and with that, you'd expect that firefighters would be better in physical challenges. Now, does that carry over to Survivor? Well, let's take a look. So first up, let's look at challenge wins, combining both tribal and individual challenges. And for this video, I'm mainly going to be using true door times in order to measure my data here, which you can check out in the description. And how they measure challenge wins is that for each tribal win, the player receives a fractional point based on if they participated or not and how many players are on their tribe. So for example, in a five person tribe, if that tribe were to win, that player would get one fifth of a point. However, if they sat out, they would get no points, obviously. For individual challenge wins, they get one full point. And then for duels, which are relevant for some of the players on this list, they would get a half a point for winning that challenge. Now, if we plug all that into the data, we clearly see that the firefighters do indeed have a pretty massive advantage in terms of challenge wins, where the firefighters collectively have a grand total of 28.58 wins across all their seasons. And if we're only including the first seasons of Tom, Jeremy, and Keith, that number is still a very impressive 22.08. Which makes sense considering that Tom, Jeremy, and Keith were pretty clear anchors for their tribe on their respective seasons. Tom especially so, who has by far the most challenge wins out of anyone on this list, winning every single tribal immunity challenge in the pre-merge, and then winning five individual challenges in the post-merge, which I'll be getting to more in a moment, for a collective total of 6.66 across the season. And Keith Nail was another prolific challenge competitor, winning 4.77 challenges during his Samuel Del Sur game, and winning another 3.16 during Cambodia. So all in all, we have two of the better challenge competitors in Survivor history. However, the Cops is a completely different story, where they've only won 14.49 challenges across their entire careers, literally just over half of what the firefighters have. And if we're only counting newbie seasons, the disparity is even worse, where they only have 7.51 wins across their newbie seasons. Which makes sense considering that their most successful season from a challenge win standpoint was Tony's Winners at War game, where he has 4.56 wins, which is the third highest overall across the list. 
However, their next highest total is Tony's Kageyong game, where he only has 2.28 wins and is only 6th place on the list. So all in all, the Firefighters have a very clear advantage when it comes to overall challenge wins, so in this category, the Firefighters clearly win. But now let's move over to individual challenge wins, which should be a more interesting category. However, even then, it only highlights the further disparity between firefighters and cops, where the firefighters have a collected total of 15 individual immunity wins across your career, which makes sense considering who's on the team. Where you literally have Tom, one of the players tied for the most individual immunity wins in a season with five. You also have Keith, who is right behind him with four from a Samuel Del Sur game, and another two from Cambodia, bringing his grand total to six. You also have Jeremy, who has three, with literally one coming from each of his three seasons. And then you have Mike, who have one each. And none of that even includes the two hero duel wins that Jeremy and Wes got from their seasons on Samuel Del Sur, which technically would bring the total to 17. But regardless of whether you want to count those or not, it's still a very impressive showing from the firefighters. But then meanwhile, the cops only have five across their careers, with all five of them coming from Tony, where he has his four immunity wins from Winners at War, and then the fifth one came from winning a reward challenge in his original season. So I think it's pretty clear that the firefighters get the point in this category. And then the other physical category is challenge win percentage, sort of combining these two categories together. And while this category is a little closer, the firefighters still had the clear advantage, winning 21.9% of all their challenges, compared to only 18.6% for the cops. And if we're only counting newbie seasons, the disparity is even wider, with 24.2% for firefighters and 18.3% for the cops. So all in all, it's pretty clear that across multiple categories, the firefighters are better in challenges than the cops, giving the firefighters a point here for challenge performance. Next up, let's take a look at idols. How effective are firefighters and cops at finding and playing idols? Now you'd think that this category would favor the cops, considering that Tony is one of the most prolific idol finders in Survivor history. And you're right about Tony finding idols. However, if we're looking at this group as a whole, the firefighters have collectively found more idols than the cops. Where even though Tony has found four idols across his Survivor career, he is also the only cop to ever find an idol, as the firefighters have found a collective total of six idols, with Tom, Keith, Mike, and Danny each finding one, and Jeremy finding two. So on the whole, firefighters get the point for finding idols. But what about playing idols? What good is having an idol if you don't actually play it, let alone play it to actually save yourself or someone else? And there are a number of ways that you can define it. However, for strictly looking at plays that negate votes, the firefighters have the clear advantage, where we once again turn to Tony where even though he has played three idols over the course of his career, he never actually negates any votes from himself. All of his idol plays are effectively wastes. And even the one time where someone else played an idol on him, which was LJ during the merge tribal of Kageyan, he negates zero votes there as well. So even though Tony has been known for finding and playing idols, he's never actually needed them to either save himself or for someone else. However, on the firefighter side, we have seen much more action where we have seen four successful idle plays from firefighters, with two of them being used to save themselves, one from Tom Westman in Heroes vs. Villains, and the other from Jeremy Collins during the final six of Cambodia, as well as two instances of firefighters playing their idols to save other people, where we see once again Jeremy Collins playing an idol in Cambodia to save Steven Fishback, and the other coming from Danny Massa in the most recent season, where he used an idol to save Franny. And if we're looking at the total number of votes negated through these idol plays, it's a similar story, where we have seen 20 votes being negated from firefighters playing idols, 9 negating votes from themselves, and 11 negating votes from others. And on the police officer side, that number is zero. So all in all, we have seen a lot more action from the firefighters, both in terms of finding idols and playing them at tribal council. Next up, let's take a look at voting behavior, which I'm using as a proxy for one's position in the game, as well as for strategic awareness in the game. However, I understand that this is not a perfect way of measuring that. And I'm sure a lot of people would say that this is the area of the game where police officers shine. After all, they're good at interrogating people. They're good at going undercover. 
And if we are looking at these various metrics, I think the police officers really have the advantage here. Now, first up, let's take a look at votes for the boot. In other words, how often do you vote correctly for the person that eventually goes home? And interestingly, it's actually a tie between the firefighters and the police officers, where across their entire careers, they each have a collective total of 59 votes for the boot. However, if we break it down solely by newbie seasons, the firefighters do have the advantage where they have 42 votes for the boot compared to only 32 for police officers. So I'm actually going to give the point to the firefighters here as a bit of a tiebreaker. Next up, let's take a look at votes against. In other words, how effective are firefighters and cops at keeping the target off their back? And I think this is where the police officers really start to shine, where across their careers, police officers have only had 84 votes cast against them compared to 105 from the firefighter side. And that holds up in the newbie seasons as well, where firefighters have had 87 votes cast against them compared to only 75 for police officers. So to that end, the police officers get a point here. Now I'm sure some people will be saying, of course firefighters will have more votes cast against them. They've been to a lot more tribals compared to cops, so they have more opportunities to have their name written down. And I would agree with those people, as well as the people at True Dark Times, which is why they developed not one, but two separate metrics designed to account for the number of tribals attended when assessing one's overall voting record. These are the tribal council percentage, as well as the weighted tribal council percentage. And for this video, I decided to calculate the combined metrics for both the firefighters and the cops. And even when we were counting for tribal councils attended, the cops still have the advantage where for tribal council percentage, the cops have a percentage of 62% for all seasons and 57.9% for newbie seasons compared to only 52.1% for firefighters in all seasons and 52.3% for newbie seasons. And if we're even counting in the weighted tribal council percentage, the cops still have the advantage with a percentage of 3.557 for all seasons and 3.093 for newbie seasons, while the firefighters only have a percentage of 2.414 for all seasons and 2.423 for newbie seasons. So even when we're accounting for tribal councils attended, the cops still have the advantage over the firefighters. So when it comes to positioning oneself in the majority and keeping the target out their back, the cops clearly had the advantage here. So we just spent the last couple minutes breaking down various aspects of the game. Challenges, idle plays, voting. And I feel like the last big test is placement. When we put all these elements together, just how well do firefighters and cops do on Survivor in terms of actually making it through the game and possibly winning? Well, let's start with average placement, where we do see the firefighters continuing to have a clear advantage, where on average, a firefighter will make it to about the final nine, while a police officer will only make it to around the final 11. And that disparity holds for newbie seasons as well. And this makes sense given that the firefighters made the merge on 13 out of the 18 seasons that they played and 10 out of 14 seasons on their newbie seasons. Whereas the police officers only made the merge on 8 of the 18 seasons that they played and 5 out of 14 on their newbie seasons. And while each team only has one first boot on them, with Jim Lynch representing the firefighters and Deb Eaton on the police officer side, the firefighters simply have fewer early boots dragging down their average, while the police officer side has the likes of Mad Dog from Australia and Outback, Jesse Camacho from Africa, Christina Coria from Cook Islands, Betsy Bolin from Samoa, Papa Bear Caruso from South Pacific, Nina Acosta from One World, Val Collins from San Juan del Sur, and even the likes of Tony Velachos from Game Changers all drag down the police officer's average and makes it so that they're less likely on average to make it deeper into the game compared to the likes of the firefighters. However, despite all the disadvantages that police officers have in terms of getting to the merge, if they are able to break through that glass ceiling, they actually perform relatively well compared to the firefighters, where if we look at the players that made it the final tribal, there is actually a tie between the firefighters and the cops, with each of them having three, with the firefighters having Tom Westman, Jeremy Collins, and Mike Turner all getting to the end. And on the cop side, you have Tony Velachos, Sarah Lacina, and Tony Velachos. And while I would give the tiebreaker to the firefighters in this case, due to them having more players getting to the end on their first seasons, 
It's so impressive that the police officers are able to close the gap, even if it's mainly Tony and Sarah that are picking at the slack here. And when it comes to actually winning the game at the end, the police officers actually have the edge where they have produced three winners, whereas the firefighters have only produced two. The firefighters only have a 67% win rate when they make it to final tribal, whereas the police officers have a 100% win rate for players to make it to the end. So what does this all tell us? After all, we have seen over the course of the video that the firefighters have so many advantages when it comes to playing Survivor. On paper, they seem to be better players, they're better at challenges, they're better at finding and playing idols, and even though they don't vote correctly as much, they have been shown to make it farther on average. On any given season, I would put more money in a firefighter making the merge compared to a cop. However, we have also seen that in cases where a cop does make the merge, they are far more likely to get towards the very end compared to firefighters whose physical prowess tends to get them targeted more often than not. But there's one critical thing to keep in mind when looking at all these numbers, particularly on the cop side, it's the Tony and Sarah factor. After all, when people say that cops would make for good survivor players, they are often the ones that people turn to. They are the examples of how people can use the skills that good cops have in order to succeed at Survivor. But I think this video has also made it pretty clear that despite this argument, Tony and Sarah are kind of the exceptions to the rule. They are outliers when we're looking at the history of cops on Survivor. After all, they represent five of the eight seasons in which a cop made the merge. And if we're looking at the other three, two of them were voted out right at the merge. So really, there's only three cops that made it relatively deep into the game. And if we're going even further than that, we have the fact that Tony won a decent amount of challenges at Winners at War. We have the fact that Tony has found all of the idols on the cop side. And even going further, Tony and Sarah have by far the most metrics that really prop up the cops across many of these categories. And despite the disparity that the cops have compared to the firefighters, their metrics are even worse in cases where we take out Tony and Sarah. So to that end, can we really say that COTS perform well on Survivor compared to firefighters? Well, the data shows that firefighters are consistently better equipped for Survivor across multiple aspects than the COPs. However, it's also possible that the trend could shift over time. After all, a lot of the COTs, particularly the ones that are early boots, played during earlier eras of the show. And we've seen in more recent years that COPs have had better success. And while a lot of that can be attributed to Tony and Sarah, it's possible that as the game shifts to being more strategic, that someone like a Tony and Sarah, someone with a cop skill set, could come in and truly dominate. But until then, the firefighters can rest easy, knowing that their ability to save lives also translate to saving their own lives. But there we go. That will do it for this week's video. If you like this content, be sure to like and subscribe. It really helps out the channel. Now, I will be doing more Survivor content in the future in the lead at the Big Brother 25, so stay tuned for that. And if you haven't already, be sure to join my Discord server, which you can join by clicking the link in the description. There's a lot of stuff coming your way, but for now, that is the video. See ya.